let's say you're a single man living in Buckhead and you're getting paid $8,333 a month. You mean to tell me that's not enough money to make it? <laughs> so I'm not with nobody, cause I don't wanna hurt nobody. Did it over text, it didn't call me. Still got love for your mommy. I know you wanna be somebody, even if you gotta leave somebody. We're gonna start off with a little bit of history for Buckhead slash Atlanta, Georgia. I just run, learned that they were trying to separate Buckhead from Atlanta. And people were saying, no, keep uh, Buckhead as a part of Atlanta. But there were a small minority of people saying, hell no, nah, we want to separate because that is one of the nicest areas in the Atlanta area. And that's why I picked it because everybody's familiar with that. And also I've heard people talk about Buckhead a lot. So without further ado, let's start off with the first video. Welcome to Atlanta. This is Buckhead and kudos to Airworthy Tours. This is the channel that is uh, responsible for putting this video together for you guys. So shouts out to them. If you guys want some Airworthy Tours on YouTube, please make sure you go subscribe. I think it's a brother actually running the platform. So without further ado, here we go. Buckhead got its name from the founder of the district, Kirby, who killed a large buck deer near his estate and placed the head in a prominent location. In the late 19th century, Buckhead was an unincorporated, mostly rural area that was also a summer resort for Atlanta's wealthy residents. However, with the advent of the automobile after World War I, Buckhead was transformed into a year-round residential neighborhood. Even during the stock market crash of 1929, lavish mansions were still constructed in Buckhead throughout the Great Depression. Below is the Swan House, which is the most famous mansion in Buckhead. It was designed by Philip T. Schutz for wealthy businessman Edward Inman. The house served as a key location for the Hunger Games Catching Fire and the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Did y'all know that? That mansion, the biggest mansion in uh, Buckhead, was the mansion in Hunger Games. Two movies. That's pretty crazy. For those familiar, it was President Snow's Palace. Buck has the wealthiest neighborhood slash district in Atlanta. As of 2021, the average home income in Buckhead is $206,000. Damn, did you hear that? The average, average home income is $206,000. Home income. That's what we're talking about, home income. So I picked the right spot. We're going to see if $100,000 will work here. And according to Realtor.com, the average list price for a home is $600,000. Woo! with the price of homes ranging from $125,000 to $12 million. Wow. In 2015, director and producer Tyler Perry made history when he sold his Paces Ferry estate for a high of $17.5 million. Tyler Perry actually sold the most expensive house in Buckhead, $17.5 million. Did you guys know that? Did my Atlanta folks know that? That's crazy. The estate is a whopping 35,000 square feet. Buckhead was annexed by the city of Atlanta in 1952, after which it saw rapid commercial development. Development that would lead to Buckhead having one of the best skylines in the south. There are currently 14 skyscrapers in Buckhead. Another development project from the 1950s was Lenox Square Mall, which opened in 1959. All right, Atlanta folks. Now, I asked this question a while back. I've heard a lot of great things about Linux Square Mall, but there were a lot of people saying that Linux, and I see Linux in Instagram news and Twitter news all the time for violence. <laughs> Reasons why you should stay away from Buckhead. So how can this mall be one of the most 
expensive malls in Atlanta. I think the most expensive mall in Atlanta, but it's so much crime that goes on here. Luckily for us, Airworthy Tours actually explains. Upon opening, Lenox Square was the largest mall in the South. Lenox Square holds over 1.5 million square feet of retail space with 198 stores on four levels. However, due to a recent spate of violent encounters inside the mall and its premises, at the time of this tour, shoppers now have to go through a security checkpoint in order to access the mall. Did y'all hear that? Is that true? Is that still true? In order to get into Lenox Square Mall, you have to go through a security checkpoint because it's that bad? My man Jimmy in the building. What's going on, Jimmy? He said, I live 35 minutes from Lenox Mall, very high-end stores, but still ghetto. <laughs> That's a strong contradiction. Like, sweet Jesus. What do you say? Uh, Jimmy says, yes, they have multiple police and metal detectors. Oh, sheesh. So how, how is that? Do I Should I visit? Keep your head on the swivel. Uh, they will shoot just about anywhere. My goodness. Man, man you know what? I'm going to just chill. <laughs> oh, Linux Mall. Emmanuel Dark says, uh, T.I. complained that his once classy steakhouse got turned into a borderline trap after people found out he owned... Oh, my goodness. Buckhead residents looking to succeed say the idea is due to the frustration over the city of Atlanta's handling of crime and infrastructure issues. Hmm. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Atlanta police data shows the policing zone that includes Buckhead saw a roughly 30% rise in aggravated assaults and car thefts last year. Man, a 30% rise? And assaults and car thefts? What the hell y'all doing out there? <laughs> the Buckhead Exploratory Committee, the group behind the succession, says that Buckhead City launching its own police department would make residents safer. However, the motion has quite the uphill battle. Buckhead City bill would have to be approved by both the Georgia's House and Senate before it is sent to the governor's desk. If signed by the governor, the question of cityhood would then be put on the ballot for Buckhead voters. The earliest opportunity for voting on the Buckhead City bill will be November of 2022. All right, so that's the end of the video. Got a little bit of history on Buckhead. So yeah, what the what the hell y'all doing out there in Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia? I've heard many people talk about it, but now just getting the history and understanding, now I get it. And thank y'all for uh, putting all the comments in the chat. You know, giving me a little bit of education on what's really going on out there because. While I was doing research for this topic, everything, you know, that I read was good about Linux Mall, Linux Square Mall. But then when you watch the video and then you your feedback, it kind of paints a different picture. And keep the interaction up, guys, because like I said, I want my Atlanta folks to be here. So I want you guys to fact check. So we're going to keep the show moving. I want to show you all the breakdown. Let's say that you earn $100,000 and then your taxes are taken out because I know a lot of people get this mixed up and I, it's better that I just show you what I'm talking about. Gross versus net, just in case you don't know. And I did this for a reason. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but some people get this mixed up. So gross income is the total re uh, revenue derived from sales of goods and services in a specific period. Net income is the profit left after deducting total business expenses from gross income. So the video that we're about to watch right now, we're going to talk about $100,000 gross and then after taxes, the net, what you take home. This is how a salary of $100,000 actually looks after taxes in Atlanta, Georgia. Federal income tax of $15,000 will apply. Then you'll need to pay state taxes of $5,300. Social Security of 6200 and 1450 in Medicare. This will leave you $72,050 for the year, or roughly $6,000 per month. Your employer is then liable for $8,000 in additional taxes. And combined, this puts Atlanta, Georgia in 27th place so far, just behind Boston. That sound about right? So, the 50-30-20 budget. That basically boils down to necessities, a.k.a. needs, 50% of your take-home pay goes to that. Once, those are, uh, aren't are essential to living and working. It's very simple. The 50, 30, 20 budget. If you guys ever wonder. 
savings and debt is 20% of your income, your, uh, your monthly annual income. So money to prepare for the future. So let's go, go over what falls into necessities. So if you look here, I put housing that can either be rent or mortgage. And I put auto pay in there. If you know that there's going to be a recurring bill that you have to pay, you don't have a choice, then why not use auto pay? And with me, all of my recurring bills, I have them in a separate account. And so any recurring bills that I have to pay, such as housing, food, transportation, basic utilities, I don't have a choice for these things. Insurance, minimum loan payments, if uh, if you have uh, any loans out, child care or other expenses so you can work. So these are necessities. And that's 50% of your take-home pay. So I don't see the issue as to why you wouldn't put certain things on auto pay when you know that you have to pay those things. And it was funny. I remember I was having a conversation and it was like, man, I don't like doing auto pay because, you know, I don't like them taking money out of my bank. I'd rather do it myself. And one guy, he was actually like, I wait until the day before my rent becomes past due to pay my, you know, pay my apartment rent. And I was like, why? That makes no sense. You just want to see the money sit in your account before you use it. But when people do that, sometimes people, they'll, if something else comes up where they think their money is going to be better served there, rob Peter to pay Paul, then they'll use their rent money on something else to try and double it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to turn 10 into 20, turn 20 into 40, and everybody going to grow. Shout out to Mike, Mike Epps. <laughs> Take the $150, go buy you an eight ball, flip the eight ball, you're going to make 300 off that. I hope the feds ain't watching this. You have to pay these bills. Why not auto pay? If somebody has a better argument as to why you wouldn't pay auto pay, please let me know, right? You know what I'm saying? Look, <laughs> I see this at the corner of my eye. Why school says because they're trying to buy those Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I'm talking about. People will hold on to that money and if they find something else that's better suited or something that they want once, right? then they'll use their rent money on that and just take the L on the back end. I'm like, what sense does that make? Like, <laughs> where's your priorities? Like, <laughs> wasn't there a girl that went viral? Like she quit her job to go to Beyonce's concert? <laughs> Beyonce, you can listen to the damn songs, you know, somewhere, some other time. Like, <laughs> so, once 30% of your income, those are extras that aren't essential to living and working. Monthly subscriptions, i.e. Netflix, um, Prime Video, what else they got? Hulu, all that type of stuff. Travel, those are once. Shout out to the Password Bros. <laughs> uh, entertainment, whatever you do for fun. So with me, it is not a, a requirement for me to go play golf every Sunday. <laughs> I try and sneak that into the necessities or whatever, but it's definitely not a necessity for me to play golf every uh, <laughs> every Sunday. But I made sure I, I worked it into the budget. So <laughs> savings and debt. 20% goes to that money to prepare for the future. That's how I classify it. Your emergency fund, we discussed this a while back, maybe two weeks ago in regards to having enough money just in case life happens. Your retirement, 401k, and then also paying off debt, high interest first, of course, that's a rule. And then let's go here. So this is the quote that I got from the internet. In 2021, uh, they said, what is the average income in Buckhead, Georgia? Median income in 2021, the median household income of Buckhead Town households was $64,000, $64,554. So let me know. So if you're making $100,000 take-home pay, then that puts you $35,000 higher than what everybody else is making. 
So this is the breakdown in pie chart format. Needs, savings, debt, repayment, and wants. Very simple. All right. So I did the breakdown for you guys so you don't have to do it in your head. So living in Buckhead, Georgia, this is what the breakdown is for. So let's say you're making $100,000 annually, and this is your net income, not gross, net. So that would uh, be $8,333 per month. $2,083 $2,083 per week. So if you look at it like that, if you're a, let's say you're a single man living in Buckhead and you're getting paid $8,333 a month, you mean to tell me that's not enough money to make it? <laughs> that, hey, get in the comment section. Let me know. $8,333 a month for a single man with no Children, that's not enough money to make it work. Go ahead and make sure you click that link, get you some Tease Handley, and support the Media Man YouTube channel, and also support Tease Handley.